Hi, I am Dave Wilson. I currently live in Austin, Texas. But as you can probably tell from the fact I talk funny, I'm from significantly further northeast. Uh, I have been an avid photographer for about 30 odd years now and now do have far too much HDR for my own good. Nice. Heath? Uh, hey, I'm Heath O'Fee. Uh, I am from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, I love to take photos. I'll take photos of anything. Um, and like a lot of these guys on here, I also love myself some HDR. Great. And Jesse. Hey. Jesse Bufundi uh, from Long Island, New York. Um, yeah, I was going to say the same thing as Heath. I pretty much, uh, whatever piques my interest at the time, you know, I just love getting out there. Um, been honing my skill at HDR as well over the last uh, year and a half. So, Great. John? I'm John Milliker, photographer in Baltimore, Maryland. I shoot uh, primarily digital for clients, but uh, I can't get away for a film. Uh, can't get away from film for fun. And Joe. Hi, Joe Hetzel. Scotch Plains, New Jersey. Not too yeah, far yeah, from yeah, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I shoot when I can, however much I can, whenever I can, whatever I can. Great. That's it. Pat? Hello, Pat O'Brien. I'm from Massachusetts. Um, just like Heath and Jesse said, I take photos, but uh, primarily... Um, I like to do landscapes, but lately we've been getting into portraits and weddings. So uh, wedding season is upon us, and it's coming fast and furious. So, but whatever piques my interest, I'll shoot it. Nice. And Rob? Hi, I'm Rob Hansen from New Bern, North Carolina. Uh, like most here, I like me some HDR as well. Uh, like landscapes, waterscapes, pretty much anything having to do with nature shots. Uh, lately, been getting into a lot of grunge and rust and ruins. Nice. Mike? Uh, Mike Lubinsky, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. I uh, love chasing storms and landscapes and pretty much everything around Arizona. But I've been getting into urbex because of a lot of you guys, or uh, specifically like Bob and Brian Matias. Um, but I also do a lot of portraits and getting more into weddings, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. So. Nice. Uh, and uh, I'm Scott Wyden Kivowitz from New Jersey. Um, freelance photographer and like um, Heath and, and uh, Jesse and Pat and everyone pretty much uh, I'll shoot whatever um, but uh, yeah portraits, landscapes, whatever it is um, so that's that um, this episode we are going to talk about um, Flickr uh, a lot of people are starting to leave Flickr in fact I uh, know that Jesse just left Flickr or stopped using Flickr, right? Cold turkey. Cold yeah, turkey. I did. And uh, after my discussion with Jesse, I decided to stop completely as well. Um, so I actually posted a little funny image, which I'll share in the blog post. But um, uh, I made a little funny image about me leaving and just posted it. Right away, I got a comment asking why. But um, so the topic. Do, is it better to, for photographers to post on Flickr or on your own blog or uh, is it better for you to put it on your Smug Mug, your Zenfolio, your uh, Zoom or whatever the, the website that Thomas Hawk was part of starting um, or any of those? What is best? So anyone want to uh, give that a go? Well, well Scott, I, I, have a, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, for those of us who live in the boonies and haven't been on, on a whole lot lately, um, Jesse and, and Scott, why did you decide to leave Flickr? I'm not aware of anything on that front. Jesse, you want to start? Okay, to hear his little explanation. Sure. Um, you know, I kind of got my feet wet uh, on Flickr, learned a lot um, over the first year when I was shooting. Um, then once I started my blog and website, I just felt like, you know, that, that was my brand and I was just trying to grow as myself instead of being involved in just a endless sea of, in my opinion, bad HDR photography. There's a lot of that in, on Flickr. Um, I, I just, it really it goes back to just trying to build my own brand. And I feel like I could identify myself on my own blog rather than, you know, being in HDR group on Flickr or what have you. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, my reasoning is... Ver is you know, that um, plus your people that go to Flickr are not going specifically to see you. 
they're going to see the millions of other photos that are on there. Um, the stats on Flickr used to be great, where you could have a website, but a lot of the traffic could be coming from Flickr. And there are some photographers that still have that traffic, uh, mostly from Flickr more than anywhere else. But uh, from an SEO standpoint, having your own photos on your site is going to be better for you. Um, but uh, in addition, if people want to see your work, they're going to come see your work. They're not going to go to Flickr specifically to find your work. They, you know, you want them to come see you anyway, so you're better off, in my opinion, um, going straight to the source. You know, so. The one, uh, let the me one. offer a, uh, Dave. Well, yeah, let me offer a counter opinion then. So, of late, I've been spending a lot more time working on my blog because I happen to like the fact I can brand things better there, but. I still get about twice as many page views on Flickr as I do in the blog, even though I'm very happy with the blog traffic. And I still reckon that probably half to two thirds of the licensing requests I get are as a result of people finding images on Flickr. Um, I've got quite a few images that if you Google them, they'll appear in the top 10 on Flickr before they appear in my blog, and the blog listings are pretty high as well. So for that reason, I'm definitely sticking with Flickr. It seems to tr funnel a lot of traffic my way. I, I definitely, I definitely would agree with Dave that I mean, not that I get a lot of licensing, but I've gotten a couple, and I know that when people are looking for photos, they may not know who I am, but they'll go to Flickr to search for something, and that's how you know people have found some stuff. And so it's kind of, I kind of like what Jesse says about branding and stuff, but there's kind of bad HDR out there everywhere anyway. Um, I. I don't know about stopping Flickr just because sometimes it does bring in a little extra. But I, I do have to agree that it, it's a real pain in the butt to keep up with it. I hate it. And I'll agree with both Dave and Mike. Um, just a couple of months ago, I had somebody um, from a design group in Florida who was looking for images of a specific spot in Maine that I had shot. And they picked up a couple of my images, we licensed them out, and they're going to be part of a uh, roadside wayside sign, you know, one of those rest areas. Uh, and that would not have happened were it not for Flickr. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Flickr, but there are some advantages to it, I think. I yeah, think, I think... Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think I'm kind of torn between, you know, the Scott and Jesse argument and the Dave and Mike argument and Rob, sorry. Um, it's, it's hard for me to keep up with Flickr as well as the blog, and I definitely prefer that the traffic I receive on my blog, I prefer to interact on my blog as opposed to Flickr. Um, that's just personal preference. Mm -hmm. And as far as, I mean, I've had maybe a few licensing requests, and I'm, I'm probably split even between Flickr and my blog. So, I, you know, I think I'll keep it up for a while on Flickr and see what happens, because I think it is a good place for people to go and sort of check out and, and try to find images to license. Um, but I'm still kind of torn between the two sides, to be honest. One, one of my reasons for, and I know that this can happen on any website, but one of my reasons for uh, uh, lowering the amount of photography I was putting on Flickr is because I was finding more and more that people were using my work without asking. And it wasn't set as Creative Commons, um, but, and it can happen all, all, right off anyone's website, so it's not, you know, that out of the ordinary, but, um, you know. DPS, it can happen off a of DPS. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, but that happened on Flickr, though, right? No, the D the DPS article that James Brandon did on the nineteen right. HDR images—that's what the guy stole from and posted on Flickr. Oh, uh, right, right. Oh, I didn't <laughs> hear about that. Nice. No. Yeah, that was about a month ago, or maybe less. I'm not sure. That's didn't some guy have his said. signature right on the image too? Yeah, yeah. The guy didn't try to hide any. <laughs> <laughs> on all of the images. I mean, that. Uh, you, you broke and a few others. Huh. We lost Joe. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we lost Scott too. Now yeah. they're back. I'm back. Am I still? Am I broken? No, you're good. So did anybody file a DMCA takedown on this guy? I I emailed um, Yahoo and had to go back and forth about four or five times before I got the form exactly right. So they they'd accept it. And they took my image down. Week one twenty four other or others, and they wanted me to get the URLs of every other person's photo here on their site. Originally, I'm like, I don't really have time for that, so um, I just got mine down. 
and I, I sent it out to everybody that was on there, I think, that was part of that article. So it's kind of up to them, I guess, to go after him and get it taken down. You didn't email me, Mike. Oh, uh, maybe you weren't <laughs> on there. <laughs> uh, could, uh, uh, is, is, is Mike breaking up for other people, too? Yeah, a little yeah bit. his audio is. A little he bit, is, yeah. yeah. Mike, send me an email. Let me know where I can find that, okay? <laughs> Lower, please. Um, anyone huh? else? I didn't bother following up on that. Because I was kind of worried about a news report I'd read a couple of weeks earlier about some guy who'd sent a DMCA takedown notice to Flickr and had his account erased rather than the offenders. Right. So I thought, I don't want to do that. I'll keep quiet about it. I suspect that that guy who posted our pictures was... Uh, some kind of kid who didn't know any better, rather than being a commercial enterprise who's trying to make money off them. Yeah. yeah. And it's still low budget, though. Yeah. Um, anyone else have anything to add? On the, on that yeah, um, I do. Uh, currently, what we do is we... I used to host my own uh, web mail and DNS server out of my house uh, in an effort to save some money, and I'm technically savvy, I guess, to, to do that. But I didn't have a large hard drive in that server, so what I did was I, I used Flickr to hotlink all of my images to and from. Uh, and then at the same time, I figured while they're on Flickr, I may as well throw them into a couple of groups and, hey, if I get explored, good enough. But Flickr's not my primary uh, you know, image source or, or place to source my images or whatever. I haven't gotten any sales lead from Flickr. I've gotten everything through my site. So while I use Flickr, it's mostly for like a free, although I have the pro account, but a free um, you know, image hosting site more than anything. And, and why not um, do that through a website like SmugMug or Zenfolio or Photoshelter or something like that instead? Well, uh, to be quite honest, uh, it's not in the budget. Um, you know, a site like SmugMug can be a little bit pricey for somebody who just doesn't have, you know, uh, the financial means for that. Um, and you know, Flickr is a is cheap enough to get a pro account, so it's and and I haven't been disappointed with their image, you know, hot linking or image hosting that I've been able to get out of it. And uh, I've since moved on. My server is not in my house anymore. Uh, it's been prone to way too many power outages and who knows, lost sales leads. So I've, I've moved my server into a data center and at the same time uh, installed a much larger hard drive. So I could move away from Flickr entirely, but, you know, old habits die hard, I guess. I have well, Photo Shelter as well. Am I, I don't know if I'm still breaking up. A little bit, but it's okay. I use Photo Shelter as well just to have a gallery and a presence kind of in a nice, I guess, nice format. But but since people search for images on Flickr, I tend to just keep using it. But I really don't bother with the social aspects of it. I throw stuff into groups, but I don't really do too much commenting and stuff on other people's. No, me work. neither. I like I said, I, I'll throw an image up on the Flickr, and not, maybe I'll toss it into a group here and there. But I don't necessarily, you know, concentrate my efforts yeah. onto Flickr. It's it's more of a dump it on the Flickr, grab the image URL, post that onto my site, and and that's that. I mean, to me, Flickr is a $25 marketing. It's effectively noise in the background. It more than pays for itself each year, although, of course, we're not supposed to do anything commercial there, which is another reason to not like it, perhaps. But you know, for 25 bucks, it's a no-brainer, really. It doesn't even take much effort to upload. I just stick uh, an image from Lightroom straight into the Flickr upload uh, bucket, wherever, and it appears in Flickr. That's true. Um, I don't know. I Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I guess for me, I, it came to a point where I wanted to, you know, have my traffic going to one place rather than possibly splitting it up to different places. So I just figured a website, my personal website, would be better geared so that towards that. So. Yeah, and that and that makes sense, and that's definitely the route that I'm going. Where I'm not publishing my Flickr account anywhere. I'm not, uh, you know, I, I just use it as a photo dump yeah. for me, and and I have everyone go to my blog. My blog's on my business cards. Um, if they were to view the source of my posts, they would see that it's on Flickr. But I'm not a, you know, they're just going to get the source of the image JPEG as opposed to my actual Flickr account. So there, therefore, my point is, is I'm not advertising Flickr, even though I use it. The the only Don't thing advertise it either. <laughs> <laughs> so Pat, make sure you don't tell anyone that you're not linking back to your Flickr account from the pictures you embed on your website. They wouldn't like to hear that, so keep no. quiet about that one, okay? All right, just delete this whole podcast then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Edit that bit out, Scott, right? 
My um, website's scottwyden.com. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, the, really, the only social aspect that I use Flickr for um, is one specific group, which is a local New Jersey group where there's, we plan meetups and photo walks every so often. Other than that, uh, you know, I'm sure there was, there was points where I was using different groups, but I haven't in such a long time. So, um, yeah. Anyone else have anything to add to it? Do, do you yeah, have your... Gonna... Who is it? Go who ahead. Was, who was that? <laughs> thought it was me and John, but I'm not sure. Well, I, I only have one video. I can't see anybody else. Oh, uh, and you're frozen for me, Joe. But... I can't see you either, Joe. It's okay. I can see, I can, I can see Jesse, and that's it. Heath is frozen for me too, but Heath looks very inquisitive. Yeah. I can't, yeah. I can't see. <laughs> um, so, who was who was going to talk? I, I don't. Oh, remember. I was. I was just going to say that I was kind of like you. Or I've actually got a little bit of a following from some of the local Arizona photographers in town, some portrait photographers, and a couple of other random people that have come to the photo walks I've put on the last couple months. And they find me through there, so it's also part of the reason I keep posting on there. And I'll post photo walk information mm -hmm. on there, too. I could probably just tell them, you know, come to my website, and I actually have their emails. But as long as it seems like a few more people end up finding me through there, um, it's still proven a little, little bit useful. It, it's definitely uh, different for every photographer, that's for sure. I mean, some photographers, they still get use out of it. They still get a lot of traffic. They still, you know use it for the social aspect or, or just for storing their photos. And some photographers, they just don't find the need anymore. So it's definitely preference, that's for sure. Um, but it's definitely a good, a good topic, topic for exploration and, uh, and for discussion, which is obviously why we're talking about this. But, um, well, I, I have a question, too. Yeah. How, many, how many of the groups here actually kind of got their start on Flickr before they had a blog or before they had a website? Okay, well, Jesse. Oh, Half uh, the group is frozen for me, so I can't get a shot. Uh, nope, this is Pat. Uh, I went straight with a blog. I didn't really start off on Flickr. I mean, I posted there, but I w I've been blogged pretty much 100%. I was, I was blogging, but uh, I was originally storing everything on Flickr, and then I moved away from it once I really started going more and more with, with the blogs. And another thing... Um, go ahead, Jess. Okay, uh, Scott, we were talking about this the other day. Yeah. Um, my, my original thought was, once I started the blog, was how I felt that Flickr, I was advertising towards other photographers only. At least with my blog, I kind of right. can get traffic from, obviously, I mean, you know, I post on Twitter, you guys see it and everything like that, but through Facebook and then friends, family, and everyone else, I direct towards that one place. So right. that was another another thing. Yeah, like really yeah. on Flickr, you're not going to have your... Uh, you're not if you're a wedding photographer you're not really gonna find a bride and groom searching for you on Flickr you may find right. a commercial agency or a business looking for some, what you shot and you know store on Flickr but not necessarily a portrait shoot specifically you it might happen you know but what are the chances that you'll find a business or a corporation you know or an agency find you on Flickr versus a portrait you know so um, you know so uh, I've got a question for everyone. Yeah. Go. Uh, if where are, you, where are you putting like photos for your grandmother, your father? See, that's what Flickr is for for me. Uh, there's a million photos that probably aren't public privileged, but are out there. Right. For me, I'm I'm putting it on my smug mug, and before I was and people using, before people I was have links that you have to hand them. Right. Right. No surprises. I, no surprises. I actually ha I have a personal blog that I've run for a long time, and. That's actually where I first started posting my images when my daughter was born. We'd take pictures of her, and then I started taking storm photos, and I'd post them on my personal blog. And then at some point, I'm like, I decided I need my own professional photography blog website, so mm -hmm. I split it. So I, but I still post family stuff on the personal site. With a login? or? No, no login. I mean, I guess I'm not much worried about that kind of stuff. Security, I probably security. should be, but... And, See, I, I take a different approach. I have actually three Flickr accounts, one of which I used for the kind of branded Dave Wilson photography stuff and all my art pictures go up there. And I have a different one purely for family pictures for the family to look at. And it's, it might even be marked private, I'm not sure. 
and I have a third one I run from a Cub Scout pack as well. So I try and keep the photography separate. Originally, right. when I started, I used to dump everything in one account, but it got too messed up. So yeah. it's better that's, to that's compartmentalize. For all of my uh, twenty five bucks, it's not a big deal. For all of my family pictures, I just dump them up onto Facebook and tag people there, and mm-hmm. and yeah. I use Facebook as my uh, family picture sharing. No Flickr for that, no blog for that, just Facebook. Downside of that, of course, is that you're limited to that, was it 720 pixel wide image or something? Okay. The resolution's rubbish, so if you want to give people pictures to print, they really can't get them from Facebook. Right. If I want to give and, pictures to people, yeah. to family members to print, I will email it to them. But most yeah. of the time, people just want to view pictures rather than print them. Yep, true. What's the print? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there's one other aspect. Try it sometime. There's one other aspect of Flickr versus blog that I've noticed is that I feel a lot more free to um, do commentary in my blog to get a little more personal with mm-hmm. my descriptions. So I'll throw a picture up on Flickr, I'll give a brief description, but then if I want to you know, rant about something or provide a little more background, I feel a little more free to do that in my blog because I know that the people who really care, who are looking to come and see the stuff, are, are going to be the ones that are most interested in that. I think on Flickr, people tend to, well, flick right through. They're, they're just passing through to take a look at those pictures. Yeah. Or, or if you put the wrong comment, your account will just get deleted, and then you'll get a free one for the next 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're all kind of dissing Flickr. I wonder what Thomas Hawk would think about that. <laughs> and you know, it's funny, um, going along with what you just said, Rob, Thomas Hawk uh, actually takes whatever he puts in his blog in his blog post for that photo, he will actually put that on Flickr as well. So he actually puts all the commentary on his Flickr photos in addition to his blog. I was doing the same blog. thing. And yeah, and I, I, I do the same I thing, too. I, I, I'm just saying I feel a little more free to comment on my blog if I choose to. Right, right. Um, and, and what's really interesting is that with SEO, SEO-wise, uh, having that duplicate content is actually bad for SEO. But oddly enough, if you search for you know whatever his his post was, you know, and it depends on how on how uh, how uh, how ranked your site is. But for him specifically, his site is actually more popular than Flickr as far as his posts go. So if you did a search for one of his posts, it would show up on hit. It would show his website, not Flickr's. But for someone else that's doing the duplicate content, it could go against them and actually show mm-hmm. Flickr as as the originator. You know, so, um, but, yeah, it's just many different good good uh, opinions about that topic. Pick up. He might not uh, answer, but uh, in the meantime, um, I use a piece of software called Pictures Pro Photo Cart. I use it for my uh, my client proofing. I use it for payments and everything, and uh, it actually works quite well to just. Uh, you know, put a password on it and uh, and put full size downloads for family and friends. Uh, if you're shooting, uh, you know, shooting any TFP, you can go ahead and do that there. And it's self hosted, so it's right on your on your website server. Right, absolutely. But I still use Flickr. Um, you know, it's a it's pretty much a necessary evil. But I I mostly use it for um, the local groups and actually for a lot of the forum kind of content for what it is there. I don't put client things up there. I put a lot of experimental and film and, and you know, just old camera-related stuff on there. But, you know, I, I get a lot more, more views on that than I get on my, uh, on my blog any day. So, you know, as soon as you weed through all the, uh, the you know, the wannabe photo critics that, that are the same ones that say that, you know, over-processed HDR, pixelated photos are just the greatest and they plaster animated GIFs and ponies and stickers and things on <laughs> I love the ponies. <laughs> uh, Once you get past that, it works. It works really well for me. But I do worry in the future about um, the ramification of um, the, uh, the brand or brands that I'm trying to create. But I, I really don't put anything more than experimental up there, or, or kind of personal projects I'm working on. So I'm hoping that down in, down the road, it doesn't bite me in the butt. Okay. I mean, I was trying to. That's kind of to the point was get traffic through Flickr to my blog when I post my post and put my link, click here to go to my website. But then they started cracking down on external linking and stuff like that. So that really turned me off. I know you could probably get away with it, but there were certain, I guess, power users and people that made Explore a lot where they would tell them, I'll put that in your profile instead. Don't put it in your post. 
Yeah, I yeah, wrestling all really the time, but that. I haven't had an issue. Hmm? Rob, say that again. I, I said I cross link quite a bit in my Flickr, but I haven't had an issue with it. Nobody's complained to me about it. No, yeah, you could still get away with it. I was just, it was really the, I guess I call them the power users, people that are in Explore every single day or whatever. Yeah, they that, were that cracking would be on that. It kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. I don't know. Ah, I agree. Yeah. Rash, rational or not. I, I'm, I'm, I really don't like it when they, uh, when they do kick people off just because they stated their opinion, you know, that, that, that always bugs me. It's a company like, like Yahoo that, you know, has so much, uh, power in the industry, why they would start kicking people off just because they spoke their opinions just go over my head. It beats me, but. I have to tell you, if anybody ever tried to censor something I was saying or doing there, I'd be out of there in a heartbeat, I'm sure. You're talking about the links business. Um, I couldn't possibly comment on whether I ever link to anything from my Flickr uh, descriptions, but have you noticed that if you try and put particular URLs in comments over the last, say, six months or so, your links mysteriously disappear? Mm-hmm. I tried to link to Photomoto recently, and it was it just disappeared. It wouldn't allow me to do it. Yeah, they probably they probably uh, they probably put some crazy code into their into their backend yeah. to block it. That's filter great. out all the kind of printing companies, anyone who might conceivably be uh, something you're trying to make money from. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Things are humming along hey, in Jeff, Talk Imagery no, Podcast <laughs> World. Ooh, that's <laughs> got a hat again. <laughs> that's the magic uh, touch to get in here. It's the Where's Long Island chic. <laughs> You know, all this flick, all this flicker talk makes me want to quit it anyway. I feel like it would be nice just not have to do it anymore. Yeah, that's another thing. I just got, I, I don't know, got lazy, I guess, too. No, I, I, I was part of, there was another website called J, JPEG Mag. I don't know if anyone's ever seen yeah. it or been yeah. on there. Yeah. But I was on there for a long time, and I actually had a lot of fun. Yeah. And But at that site, flick they have the underbelly works and all the little ins and outs and people can delete and all that. But on JPEG, there were people that would just join. Two days later, their photo was on the front page, like right. on the slideshow. show. And I knew that they're letting their friends come on and get their photos right up there. And there was a lot of fear to them and stuff. And plus, I just got lazy and I got sick of um, posting stuff every day. My blog. What? Um, J- JPEG magazine actually, um, they went out of business and then got rebought, and that. W- yeah. They went downhill as soon as that happened. Everything changed. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I used to yeah. that site. Yeah. I like the idea, the potential that you could get in, in a mag on a magazine and right. seem like there's a little bit better, you know, system there, but yeah. you know. Uh well, you know, I have another topic that uh I can bring up. It, tell me if you guys are interested. Um you know all these group chat uh, cell phone apps that are coming out? Have you been hearing no. about these? No. Uh, no. Beluga just got bought by Facebook, so this, they're going to probably integrate that soon, I would imagine. Um, group Me, Kick, um, Live Profile, there's all these apps that you just, it's group chat, you can share photos, you can um, share your location easily with the group, your video, um, but then, uh, group me took it to a new level and made it so you can actually call a conference line for free inside the app, just one click and everyone can be on a, on a, on a phone line. Um, and I've been experimenting and, uh, actually and made a beluga one today with, uh, Phil, um, just thinking how can those be used for photographers? Sort of like this, how we're all Skyping, but just sort of on the go, you know, are, can group chat apps be something useful now or in the future for photographers around the world to easily just chat no matter what, um, what uh, you know, network they're on, whether it's AT&T, Verizon, or whoever, um, you're using your data plan, it's no SMS, although GroupMe is the only one with an SMS back, uh, uh you know, a backup plan, but could it be useful? You can easily share photos with the group. Um, groups meet, group me's new feature where you can call the landline. That would be great. So you can, you know, actually have a conversation 
outside of text if you really wanted to with the entire group, entire group. But would that would that be a good thing for photographers in the future, or would that just just another thing for photographers to do? I mean, what do you guys think? It's talking on the phone. Just not to take pictures. <laughs> um, yeah, it is just talking on the phone, but or texting, yeah. but. <clears throat> But, um, I'm getting somewhat jaded. I mean, I, I, I'm currently getting to the point of saturation with social media, I think, and that would just be another thing to distract me. Right. Uh, I think Instagram is enough for me, I guess. Like, I like that social aspect of it, but I don't know how much more involved I'd get, I guess. Like Dave said, how much can you keep up with? That's right. kind of the reason I get stop with Flickr, too, you know? So. Yep. I, I guess it's kind of cool that you can conference in a bunch of you know, friends and talk to them on the phone, but I just don't know how often that would happen without it being a scheduled yeah. thing anyway that you could just do with Skype or something. Oh, yeah. uh, in high school, school, it's different. I think one of them actually allows you to make events, too. <laughs> so, um, so you'd be at an event and make an event? No, you can, you can actually, <laughs> you, can, you can be chatting and then you can schedule an event for something. I don't even know. I don't know. I've been installing them and messing around <laughs> just to see, but... No, if we were in high school, I think that would be good. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of like Dave. I think I think I'm getting old and grouchy, and that's why I like left JPEG and like like all this talk about Flickr. I just want to leave because I use Twitter and I use my blog and I, you know, I use Facebook and even that's almost a lot. And any of this new stuff, I just I don't even want to learn it all. I just kind of want to stay where I'm at, and I don't know. I hate learning all these new things and the. Um, and yeah, so my space page, just, page Mike. So no, <laughs> oh, I have. That's where I started. I got rid of. That. I've been on there in like six years. I, I, I have one. I'm friends with Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I must already be old and grouchy because I just can't be bothered with that kind of stuff. I, I can't even keep up with what Scott was saying, much less actually do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I didn't know all the chat stuff you're talking about. I don't even. I don't even know what any of those are. So I, I was kind of the same way, Rob. To be honest, it's not enough to keep up with like everybody's Twitter updates on a on a daily basis. Oh lord, yeah. yeah. It's like a second job. Some new form of social media at this point. Do you have to have friends be part of a social network? <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there's another uh, app that I, I can bring up as well. Um, completely di different topic. Um, a company called Venmo. It's a new startup that they're. It seems like they're trying to compete with Square and with PayPal. It's uh, basically mobile payments, um, and you can connect to your friends on Twitter or Facebook. You can make a dollar payment. You can make you know a, a three thousand dollar payment. There's no fees. They don't charge you a dime. It's I don't make know. enough payments. <laughs> um, but like, let's say uh, you know I made a bet with you, just you know, and and you won, and I had to buy you a cup of coffee. I can send you 250 you know, or whatever it is through the app, and it won't cost me or you anything besides the actual, you know, 250 to... I'll um, bet you can't actually payment. do that, Scott. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> send me... <t> <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do we, do we both have to be on Venmo to, for that to work? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. How do they make money? Now, yeah, and here's yeah, the exactly. kicker. Here's the kicker. If you were refer a friend, they give you a dollar. I, I did it twice today. <laughs> It's, you made two bucks today. I mean, two bucks. Yeah, you got, it's you friends got half a cup of coffee there, man. But like, you know, like half a cup of coffee. I think I think it could be great for businesses eventually for something like this. But how are they going to make? How is this company making money if they don't charge you fees? That that doesn't well, make any the, sense. The credit card yeah. company isn't cutting them a break. Right. Um, but you know they don't take Amex. <laughs> <laughs> could could um. Could this this sort of uh, mobile payment be something that photographers could use in the future? I know that I've already, tr um, you know, I've used Square once so far, and I was going to use it a second time, but the they, the the uh, client wound up sending me a check instead. But Square Square is good because you would have, you know, someone has a credit card, they're walking around, um, and they're going to pay it. But if if I was to use as a photographer, I can't imagine any of the clients that would either buy my work or come to a photo shoot. Venmo on their phone and maybe able to pay me. Like it just seems like that would be so rare. R agreed. That would be difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, mean someone time... a bit of. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Just 
Yeah, I mean, the t a couple times I've used Square I was actually uh, at an art fair, and I sold a couple of pieces, and uh, um, one of them was to a woman, I mean, she was probably in her 70s, and didn't even didn't want to sign her finger on the phone because she couldn't handle that. So, I mean, she'd never, I don't think she'd be walking around with Venmo, basically, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Now, if I knew all you guys and we went out to lunch all the time and we were throwing bets around, then, then that might be fun. <laughs> I'll warn you that playing um, poker or something. I think Google's trying to do something like that. I was trying to uh, browse the train wreck of the new Gizmodo, and uh, I couldn't get through the article. But um, Google's giving out you know a whole bunch of phones and uh, to basically do the same thing to retailers in New York, from what I from what I understand. So, hmm. be it better or worse, uh, you know we can't we can't resist Google, and they'll probably win in the end. Yep, that's true. <laughs> Google's coming out with the. Uh, Coming out with circles or some new social network that probably in the next like in three years from now it'll it won't, we'll forget about Facebook and it'll all be about circles. Who knows? Isn't that what they said about Just Google like Buzz? Buzz. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Google Buzz. <laughs> we were we we were just joined by Phil Cohn. Hey, Phil. Hey, Phil. Good evening, everyone. How are hey, you? Phil, Phil uh, we we uh, I guess it's the new tradition to do. Uh, introductions in the beginning of the podcast, but since you came in the middle, do you want to do a, a short introduction? Sure. Uh, met all these gents through uh, my HDR pursuits. You might know me through the website, thedailyportsmouth.com, where I'm chronicling my uh, uh, adventures around Portsmouth, New Hampshire, where I live and work and shoot uh, a very cool working waterfront kind of seacoast city. Um, that's most of it, and trying to uh, build a life, um, leveraging some some photography as part of that. Working a way to, um, I think tonight's theme was business stuff. So finding ways to sell prints and connect with potential customers um, who who enjoy my stuff and putting it out there for them to find it. Speaking of prints, is that are those that, those paper things that are behind you on the wall? <laughs> yeah, those are really old ones. She was still looking nice. You can tell because like, there's no good color in them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the old analog days. Um, oh, we, yeah. we actually already talked about the uh, Flickr versus your own website, but if you want to um, you know, give your opinion on um, what you think about using Flickr to host your photos or to share your photos versus putting them on your website. Um, but, um, sure. No, for me, Flickr has been sort of the way to to have that as my photo depot, where I'll link the anything on the Daily Portsmouth um, back to Flickr. So it's been, um, albeit a slower way to connect to people on Flickr than I've been able to through Twitter and the website itself. Uh, but it's been a good sort of database for me that um, to have everything sort of linked back to that, and then really trying to build the presence through the website itself. And then circling back, I found myself reconnecting with people I've met on Twitter and everything um, back in the, the Flickr world. So uh, I think it's uh, a nice realm, but I don't think it gives you the level of customization and personality that you could, that you could really build on the website itself. Great. And have you, um, have you found yourself uh, getting customers or leads through Flickr at all? It's it's hard to say. I think it's helped um, with exposure and visibility through Flickr, but but the majority of everything comes directly through the website itself, or just from face to face networking and, mm -hmm. and good old fashioned pounding the pavement locally. Uh, the day job has helped with that. I was pretty well connected in my um, business community before the photography ever came into my day to day. I guess. So that it was more of a natural transition and sort of a fun conversation to have with people after the fact. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, okay, let's uh, go on to the uh, second, or I guess now it's the fourth topic. <laughs> um, the uh, Twitter for personal or business um, and or both. Or who wants to start with this topic? Um, I hate to cause you an edit, but I have to drop off, I'm afraid. Oh, okay. It's go to bedtime. Bloody There's children hell. I need to go in tents to. Sorry. <sighs> Phil can take over. He's doing a great job. So <laughs> see see well, you guys next have time. Good night, Dave. It's been fun. See you, Dave. See you later, Dave. Bye, guys. See you, Dave. Bye, Dave. And by the way, hello, Hi. Philip. This is Rob. Hi, Rob. How are you? I'm okay. Pleased to 
meet you. Yeah, pleasure. Absolutely. Um, okay, Dave is gone. Now we can make fun of him. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, no, please, accent. go ahead. <laughs> um, okay, so anyone want to start with this topic, Twitter uh, for personal versus business? Who wants to go? I could take it, Scott. It, okay. <laughs> it depends. Who's taking it? Go, go for ahead. It. Go for okay. it, John. You know, Twitter is uh, is kind of necessary as well. Um, the problem is I haven't been able to figure out a way to do personal and and you know run a brand. So I think it really helps just being personable on Twitter and being yourself and and kind of venturing out of photography. It kind of you know makes you look like you're human. Uh, the the obvious things are a lot of people get in you know get really big into politics or things that uh, you know half the country thinks are right and half the country thinks the other half are morons. So. Whoever you insult, you're going to insult a lot of people. So you kind of got to, kind of got to, you know, keep back a little bit. And I do bite my tongue a lot, but uh, but you know, I've I've gotten quite a few jobs from uh, from Twitter and quite a few jobs from Flickr. But I I just I just go ahead and just throw myself out there as kind of a personal account. But you know, you don't you can't really spam your services. You can't really you know you got to be genuine on Twitter because they'll see right through you. But uh, it's it's a really product uh, productive tool to uh, to get clients and you know just to social network with with people in your area or in your your field of expertise. I fa- I've found Twitter to be like incredibly valuable and and I think it's like John said it's a good mix to use it for business and try to promote your business and interact with other photographers in and not just photographers but maybe you know companies like on one or. Um, photo shelter and stuff interact with them but i also you know use it personal you know to interact with the friends i have here you know i talk to my wife on it and um but i think it, i think like john said it helps for people to know kind of who you are not you're not just you know th- there's some people on twitter that all they ever do is post links to photos like if you look at their stream they have links to their photos and retweets and that's it you have no idea what kind of person they are mm-hmm. and that's what i kind of like about you know, the group that I kind of hang out with, I mean, every now and then we'll get into like a 50 tweet rip on each other <laughs> afternoon rant. And it's like the greatest thing. And other people see that. Does and... someone iron their jeans in this group? <laughs> <laughs> no, that person, unfortunately, is not here right now. Oh, dang it. Uh, I call him Brianna after that. But, um, <laughs> but, I, but I, that kind of stuff, I think people see that and, and, li- and like that. You know, you're not just someone sending out links to your stuff. So, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Anyone else have anything to add? <clears throat> so, I, I get a uh, follow request from a car dealership. Do you think a car dealership as a business is tweetable? Should it be on Twitter? Um, yes, <laughs> I, I do. Um, but I don't think that they're, they're probably not using it the way that they should. I don't, I, know mean, if, I don't know if they've figured out. I don't know if anyone knows the best way to use it for... For a car dealership, but I mean, there's just not that much. How many cars do you buy? Well, see, the the, the car dealership that I bought my my Prius from, they're on Twitter and Facebook, and they do more than just post their specials. They um, they'll they'll do um, you know Twitter coupon codes, uh, coupon uh, you know to print out things. Um, they will post you know Toyota news, um, whether it's related to the Prius or to Toyota in general. Or just auto industry news. So they do. They go a little bit beyond uh, just themselves, which I think is a good thing. Um, yeah. so. I think it's valuable for any business to do that. Just just for the the ability to connect directly with a customer in in sort of a, a more convenient way for a lot of people, right? Um, yeah. Not everyone's going to want to take the time to go down to a dealership or go down to any kind of store to to talk to a seventeen year old dude who happens to be working the, the counter, right? So I think Twitter is a great tool for for any business to use, just to to establish a new way to communicate with their customers. Yeah, if that if that car dealership if they took requests or questions from people about how much they could give for a car, or or actually trying to sell their cars through Twitter, and you get better deals or something, it could be very um, it could be valuable. I would yeah. think if they learn if they knew how to use it right. <laughs> so so let me ask. Um, oh, go ahead, Jesse. Yeah, I think uh, Mike touched on this. Um, how it could be useful for photographers and businesses being on Twitter. Um, for example, I, I snowboard in Okemo all winter long, and anytime I post a picture, I'll say I, you know, 
I took this and I'll put their Twitter handle in there. Who knows what will come of it? You know, maybe the, down the line they'll want to do a, a calendar, a pamphlet, whatever. But they know I exist. You know, they know I'm taking, making images there. So, I mean, that's just one small example. But for photographers, I think it's, it's incredibly useful because, you know, everyone in this world, as we've learned, just they need pictures and right. they want pictures. And I think using it that way is definitely uh, a great tool. That that actually happened to me recently. Uh, uh, it, it you know it happened like um, uh, Eastern State Penitentiary in Philly. They do that. If you post and, and it says Eastern State, they're going to retweet it, and then all their followers are going to see it. But right. uh, the Miss America shoot that I had recently, uh, Miss America retweeted uh, uh, the Project Fifty Two photo that I that I posted of her, and it got massive amounts of hits, more than than my post typically get but so I definitely agree it's good definitely good for uh, for 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 business and and you do have to be personable and yeah. human you know, that's for sure I was yeah. just gonna say I had I have a pretty good example of that because I, I just remembered after Jesse said that that it worked for me because there's a, a guy in town that runs like three restaurants and they're very family oriented they're kind of one-off restaurants unique and he uses Twitter unbelievably. I mean, he drums up so much business by using that, interacting with the community. But because, like, I took some pictures there, portraits or something, one night I tweeted that I, you know, tweeted with their name that I took these pictures there. And then one of their followers saw it, went to my site, saw that I did portraits, and, like, a week later I fo did a photo shoot with him and his kids. And it was all because of linking to other businesses that um, are in the community with you, and then their followers see you and realize you're in the community it doesn't i mean it's not like that happens every day but even if it happens once it's right. paid off right yep and so so on that note um how many customers have you gotten how many whether it's a simple print sale or an actual photo job how many and what kinds have you actually gotten through twitter that you can track that you know of came from twitter Everyone up actually comes through Twitter. You know, they, they uh, DM me or they, they friend request me. Most of the time it's people that uh, I have nothing in common with. I may share the same, uh, the same city or the same state. And uh, just being friendly. Uh, if they post something or, or they're having a bad day or something, you know, you'd be, you'd be friendly like you would with somebody face to face. And, uh, and you know, you just become part of a, a, a group of people's lives and, and they become part of your life and your Twitter, uh, your Twitter world. And uh, you know, eventually, it's like a big family. You know, hey, I, I know that John does portraiture. I know that uh, you know this person uh, works for a uh, a realtor. Uh, uh, you know, there's just so many different businesses out there. And when they know you, they think you they think of you as family, and they they will actually usually send their business your way. Right. Sure. Hey, Scott. Um, Scott would attest that I've been a bit of a luddite. You know, I I don't really keep up to date on all the technologies, and. Uh, People have kind of tried to drag me kicking and screaming into things like Facebook, and I, I'd actually lump Twitter into that group also. I started out, I keep hearing all this dripping water here. Um, I started out on Flickr, you know, posting my images, and then I struggled through creating my website, and that was all well and good, and I had, you know, a, a bit of feedback. But I think my exposure and my world to photographers really opened up when I got on Twitter. Because unlike Flickr and the, and the website, it's a very dynamic interchange. And I could say, as I look across the screen, with the exception of Joe, I think, I've met everybody that's on the screen through Twitter. And it's really you know, opened up my world in a, in, a, in a really great way because you get that instantaneous communication. And you do get a, a, a more dynamic sense of who the person is rather than just looking at a Flickr photo stream or even going to a website. Mm -hmm. so uh, I think I think Twitter's been great. Go ahead, Scott. To answer your question real quickly, I think I had like I think I've probably gotten four photo shoots because of it. Um, sold maybe two or three prints, and I think if Brian were to get on here, I think I've sold a copy of my book at least for you, which I very very much appreciate. So I mean, because of Twitter, it's you know, and also that doesn't count. You know, if I li I link Twitter to Facebook, and the stuff that happens on Facebook because of stuff that I tweet about. You know, it's a whole other story, too. Wait, that, that book that I bought, I think that's what's holding up my coffee table right now. Yeah, <laughs> all right. I'm three quarters of the way through, Mike. 
Um, Be careful, it's not too thick. It'll probably, <laughs> the water will probably go right through it pretty soon. Uh, is, that, is Brian trying to get on, by the way? Yeah, I think yeah, someone's going to pop up and disappear. Woo! <laughs> nice. Um, nice. Oh, I don't have my copy in reach. <laughs> what is the name? Go ahead and plug it. Yo. Hey, Brian. Storm Chasing Arizona. This is, uh, Storm Chasing Arizona. Good stuff by Mike. Get it. Pick it up. I saw that in the five dollar bin the other day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brianna. Hey, Brianna. Why don't you leave again? Go eat your dinner. <laughs> I, I saw it. I'm like, I know this book. I'm like, oh, that was the book that I sold back, but they only gave me two fifty. <laughs> 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 How are you? Um, hey, Bri. Yo. Do you want to do a little intro now that you're on? Uh, sure. And and this time you I'm can actually do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait. Uh, let me turn. Let me take this. Uh, I don't see anyone except for I see John and Joe. What's up, guys? Hey, Brian. I don't see you yet. I don't see, I see everybody except Brian. Yeah. Keep it that way. Yeah, right. I like it. I like it a lot. There we go. There's everyone. There, uh, my man. My uh, man. What's up, man? Hey, put your turn. <laughs> Jesse's, Jesse's the only one that's coming in high def, man. Everyone else is coming in like six. Oh, four. yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jesse, you are high def. That's how I live my life. Yeah. Good man. You're, in- <laughs> You're both wearing New York shirts. <laughs> There's a reason for that. <laughs> you know, he's wearing something that says, what, books? Yep. Hey, um, Rob. Hey, Brian. How you doing? How you doing, man? I'm doing well. I'm doing right. Hey. Who is that? <laughs> Someone else trying to get in? Someone drop. No, uh, me, and John, me and John conversing. Oh. Um, so, Brian, do you... Uh, we already talked about a bunch of topics, but um, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, a little if, late, Brian. <laughs> you want, if you want to do an intro, you can do an intro, and then I'll ask you the same questions that I asked everyone else. Okay. Uh, so, do you want, when when should I do my intro? Go for it. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <I'm> Brian. <laughs> um. Hey everyone, my name is Brian Matias. I'm the curriculum and education manager at Online Software. Uh, I want to, you know, I, I really appreciate being part of this awesome group of photographers, especially HDR photographers myself. So uh, I hope you're a series that Scott's putting together. And uh, that's about it. You can go to my website at uh, brianmatias.com, which don't bother trying to spell it, it won't work. Well, it's actually going to say it on the screen, so so they can. Uh... <laughs> Never <laughs> mind. Like Scott's done the heavy lifting for you. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, the first topic we talked about was using uh, Flickr versus your own blog, and there's been a, a lot of different opinions. Um, some good, some interesting. I'm not going to say any bad opinions because it's an opinion and, you know, whatever. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's, wow. your, what's your thoughts on it? Uh, you know, I think most of us, if not all of us, started on Flickr. Um, it just no. was the most – I didn't ask you. I don't remember asking. <laughs> who. If you had been here in the first hour, you would have known that. <laughs> I think only one, person, only one person raised their hand when that question came up. <laughs> really? Really? All of you guys started on your blogs? Um, yes, no, no, I started on Flickr. I saw her flicker. Oh. Flicker. Flicker. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, listen, Geo- Craig. Maybe I just can see the video <laughs> with my feet the hand. Get your insure, man. Get, get your proper nutrients. Go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Take the teeth out. <laughs> um, no, it, I think I, I know I started on Flickr. I, sh- I guess I shouldn't speak for anyone else. but And it was awesome because it Flickr was based around – it was the first community-based – or one of the first successful community-based photo sharing sites, and um, you know after that, uh, I think Smugmug came after that as kind of the more professional mm-hmm. uh, forum for photographers. Um, but after a while, when I started, I think Flickr is awesome for even for the casual user. Flickr is awesome, but more and more now, the barrier to entry for blogging is becoming uh, smaller and smaller. So 
what made me switch, there were two primary reasons. One was the, the, the um, traffic. I was just incensed with giving traffic to Flickr and paying them for the pro subscription. Um, but second, also just the overall control of my content. And I wanted to do a little bit more with Flickr, as, as most of you know, is very slow to the plate with kind of keeping up with modern trends of photography, like larger images and just overall features. It was just re fairly recently that they increased the resolution of their images. For the most part, for most of their existence, it was a much smaller size. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to keep traffic to my site. I wanted to divert traffic to my web page. Um, first, because to get to my page, you have to know my name. Like everyone here who has a website, it's typically your name or your, your company name. So right off the bat, you're building recognition there, brand awareness. Uh, but secondly, you know, it's my, I control my content. I control exactly what goes on there. If I want to be, uh, you know, put any type of content I can, I don't have to worry about rating it. I don't have to worry about someone else um, putting a stupid award on it. I shouldn't say stupid. That's not nice. But I can't stand those awards. You like um, the unicorns. Yeah, the unicorns and the rainbows are great. <laughs> I mean, some people and go the to glitter. Oh, those animated gifts, man, are, are really impressive. Um, but no, Up that's until basically the point it. You delete them. Yeah, well, the, uh, it's, I see people now more and more just turning off comments, um, which to me defeats the purpose of community photo sharing. But uh, I much, I would much rather go to each of your blogs and see the work on your site, the way controlled by you, than go in a Flickr. Um, and then, of course, I'm, I don't know if anyone brought up that. I'm sure someone did that, how that Flickr lost that one guy's entire account. Uh, um, and it's one in a, a billion chance that, of that happening, but still, it, it does worry me. So, I, that's it. So, yeah, I, I'd much rather people come to my site. Um, I can, plus, it's feature added. Like, I can't put a best practices guide on Flickr, um, but I can do it on my site. And you guys can do your own content stuff. You know, I could do my behind the curtain thing. I can't do that there. Right. So. Yep. There's definitely a. Well, another thing, I guess it depends on what type of user we're talking about. I mean, we're all at a. When you first started, yep. I know I personally used it. I would find guys that did great seascapes, for example. And I look at the EXIF data and see their settings, and I learned a lot that way. Yep. So for beginners, I'm definitely, you know, I know that I stopped using it, but I'm still a proponent for starting there. You can learn a lot and, yeah. but, you know, it's, it's kind of a good thing to graduate from, I guess, in my, in my mind. That's uh, excellent. As, I guess it's as, an excellent opinion as well. Um, what, does, what does EXIF stand for? Extremely in, uh, Intense Film, right, John? You know what it stands for? <laughs> Is that a fact? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Um, actually, I don't know what it stands for. Well, do you know that TAC? I believe that, like, TAC Sharp. TAC is an acronym. I'm going to go on Wikipedia, but it does, I believe, stand for something. <laughs> um, TAC Sharp. Exchangeable image file format? Yep. As we all Google. Now, Jesse. <laughs> Hey Jesse, I was just gonna I was gonna agree with you because that's kind of what I when I joined JPEG Mag Magazine, I kind of did that before Flickr, but for the most part, that's what I used it for. I think I would go through hundreds and hundreds of images a day oh, of me too. People, I, yeah. people I liked, or just going through the the stream of new photos, and it really helped me, I think, grow and kind of figure out what I thought was cool, what I liked, what was good, and what I could kind of use as inspiration. And I think that was a huge like. I, mean, I did that every day for like eight, nine months, a year, or something like that. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, I I remember literally printing out um, like screenshots of people's uh, like uh, camera settings and stuff and, and the image and taking it to try to not reproduce the shot, but something a similar technique. And you know, actually, nice. That's that would nice. make an awesome blog post, man. You should really do that. Mm -hmm. You should really do that. That's an awesome blog. I love seeing that kind of stuff. Um, just you know the. The uh, stomping grounds, each person's stomping grounds. Like that's just today. I, I was tweeted. I'm like, I was going through my older, older images in HDR, and I'm like, God, this is <laughs> awful. Uh, I know. We I found, really uh, here, here's what tack sharp. So the word tack and sharp are acronyms. 
And so this is this sounds like freaking malarkey, but TAC stands for <laughs> Technically Accurate Cybochrome Kelvin, which refers to the color temperature of light in a photograph. And SHARP stands for Shutter <laughs> Hyperfocal at Refracted Polarization. That's a bunch of crap. I was going to say that, actually, but I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's on Wikipedia, so it must be true. Oh, yeah. oh, wait a minute, I just Brian changed wrote. it. It's not true anymore. <laughs> You know what? I'm an idiot. Scratch that. I'm a total idiot because apparently it's a, from Scott Kelby's book and he was just writing that as a... Uh, <laughs> as... <laughs> Maybe you need to take your insurer and go to bed. <laughs> oh, winning. Wow. That deserves two. Winning. <laughs> that was great. Oops. <laughs> um, Stand cool, kids. <clears throat> okay, and uh, the second topic was um, Twitter for personal or business. And again, there was some really good feedback, really good comments. Um, so uh, <clears throat> how do you use Twitter? And uh, are you more focused on business or personal? I already know the answer. We all know the answer, but you know, we gotta say it anyway. And um, after that, have you, do you know for sure about uh, making sales or getting customers through Twitter um, when you do focus on business? It's a great topic. Um, it's a really important topic for those people who are, you know, tr photographers trying to make a business out of it. Um, and I know there are people who do both. They they, they have their uh, personal account and their business account, which is great if that's what you want to do. Um, before I, I started working at On One, I, I still, I just had my, my Brian Matias account but from if you, I mean, you can go through my very first tweet through today, and you'll never find a politically charged um, tweet. You'll never find a tweet with any form of a curse word, even though it's totally different here. Um, yeah, you can't say the word goofy, right? No, goofy's fine. Cranky's fine. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm very, very sensitive to uh, maintaining. If I'm going to do that, even though I'm not a business anymore, I'm not attempting to be a business because I'm a t uh, diverting all of my attention to, to on one. Still, and that, in a way, I feel like it's become more. I've become more sensitive to it because now I'm affiliated with on one, which is also a Twitter presence, and I don't want um, my personal account to jeopardize, you know, the standing of the on one account, which is much smaller right now like I have a larger following on my account than, than on one does but still so I think if you're gonna use Twitter in any f way it, even if it's personal you should maintain a consistent um, a very consistent uh, tone and if you're a photographer and you're trying to put yourself as a photographer leave your opinions to photography um, even that just I try to not have I try to be as, as um, unopinionated as possible uh, when I tweet. Obviously, everyone, we all, every day, we, we promote ourselves and we promote each other. And I think that's fantastic. But I find I get very, very uh, disconcerted when I see it. I'm not going to name names, but there is one person in particular that some of us definitely know. And sometimes I see these tweets, and, and his work is actually pretty, pretty damn good. But I see these tweets or I see you know, the content of his blog post, like the context itself. And I'm like, man, you just ruined it for me because you come across as this like eighth grader, um, and and I look at that, and I, and a lot of people do too. So um, I think it's it's very important to maintain a consistent tone. I'm all about having fun with with the friends, you know. Like I'll tweet and jab at people, and people jab at me. That's there's I see nothing wrong with that. But on Twitter, on Facebook, I keep it very very G rated because it's important to maintain consistency. Um, so that's it. Um, actually, well, uh, okay, before I go on to this next question, which I'll, it'll sort of be another topic for everyone that, um, Brian just sort of gave me this idea, but Brian, um, do you, for when you were focusing more on, before on one, when you're focusing on your own, uh, photography yep. business, do you know, uh, of customers or sales, print sales that you've gotten specifically through Twitter? No. Not one? No. Ooh. Nope. I don't... Oh, so that's another... I do not... That's a, another very poignant question. 
I do not ever really advertise it. Before I was with On One, I had my gigs. I, I did my restaurants, my hotels. Um, I had the, the, the I think the day I accepted my offer at On One, I got an awesome request for an RFP, a request for a proposal by a, a major casino ba- uh, company in Vegas. I see people that tweet out these things like, I, you know, like, oh, sweet, I just got another check from Getty. And I, I get very turned off by that because you're, you don't see anyone who's anyone ever tweet their business other than promoting an event. Like, I just don't find that. That to me, the, the books stay with the books. And I, even if I did get business, I would never ever, um, I, I, if I was a wedding photographer and I finished the wedding, I would absolutely say thanks if they were on Twitter, so and so for, you know, had a great time at your wedding, can't wait to get your shots ready for you. But saying like, yeah, I just booked another wedding, that to me is, it's, it's um, Bush League. You don't need to do that. No one, I don't want to know that you have business. I'm happy for you. You want to tell me offline, that's great. But in a public forum, no one should know whether you're getting business or not. To me, it's just very tacky. Um, and it's a strong opinion, but it's, it, look at all the successful photographers out there and see if they've ever posted that they are getting, hey, I just landed a REI gig if I was Chase Jarvis. No, 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 no. You don't right. do that. Even like dumbing that down, even when, you know, just people that are still trying to make this something and say, uh, it's great, just sold another print. Even that kind of exactly. rubs, me the, rubs me the wrong way. And I yep. feel like, you know, you should be more humble than that. And it kind of, once you get that out on the internet, there's no taking it back. So you see prospective clients down the road seeing that you're jumping for joy about selling one image. I don't know. I just don't think Such it's a good point. Look good. Such a, a perfect point, Jesse. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, question about that then. Mm-hmm. I see a lot of people um, using blog posting for that. What do you think about that? Like, um, I see a lot of wedding photographers that they'll, you know, that they're not sending their clients just to the blog posting to get their proofs. You know, they're giving them a different proofing system, but they'll actually make a blog article saying, you know, here, look at these images. This is so and so. This is the wedding, or this is the event I shot. And it's kind of, it's kind of along the same lines, but you know, we. Uh. That. It's a little it's a little different to me because you're advertising what you do on your website for yep. prospective clients. It's different than bragging. I, I understand what Brian and Jesse are saying because I think when I first started, I would I would get so excited about selling a print or something that I would be like want to tell the world. And after a while, you just kind of chill out because you don't people don't want to see you know they don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear what that happens with other people. And, and sometimes something <laughs> exciting happens where you gotta you want to tell everybody. I mean. I don't care. You know, I'm a little more open, I think, sometimes than other people. Like, Brian's pretty reserved. I'm a little more transparent. So, if I get excited about something, I'm just, that's my Twitter account. I kind of am honest. But as far as, like, blog posts go, you got to advertise what you do because the only way that someone's going to use me for a wedding photographer is, you know, hopefully they see what I do and don't just throw a dart at a website and at a name and, and get photos taken by them. And, and, they won't. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Keep going. No, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, it, it's especially the case when it's a wedding photographer because when, um, you know, when, when you're getting married, you're, when you're looking at photographers' websites, uh, you're, you're going right to the blog nowadays. You're not going to the portfolio first. Um, yeah, right. I mean, it, I guess it depends on the website and how they, how they, you know, design it and organize it. But from, you know, I've been looking at photographers for months for, for my wedding and first thing I do is go to the blog. And that could just be because, uh, you know, being a blogger. You're more savvy. Yeah, but, but... Well, Scott, when you subscribe to your website, your, the RSS feed is typically for the blog. And for right. me, you know, I track a lot of websites like that, mm-hmm. and that's all yeah. I see is a blog, to your point. Yeah. Right. right. Um, I, but, uh, you know, I, yeah, so I know rec- someone, someone I know recently had um, their photographs taken by a photographer who didn't really blog much about it. They had, like, three or fo- four photos of their, their best workup from the last year, and when they got their pictures, they were disappointed with the quality. It was because they didn't, that, that photographer didn't advertise what they usually do. It was like, here's my four best photos of all the weddings I did last year. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, if you can only pick four out of what you did, it's not very good. And because when I learned how I see four photos you took and nothing else. So I don't really know what you did last year. And I don't know 
if I could trust you, take my pick. Because of your latest work, and I really think people see your website active. You know, you put photos recently, a blog recently about a wedding you did. They see that you're doing it. Not like your last one you did was months ago. I don't know. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Like mine, <laughs> I just I just see Mike kind of moving around like this, and then his voice will come in a little bit. <laughs> Mike, the bandwidth, I like. I think most every other word was cut out. Yeah, the thing is, really? I think it's the hotel. And I had awesome stuff to say too. Well, that's your loss. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think the one point I want to make is so, like, you know, for me, when something cool like that happens, I'm, you know, it's it's important to me. I'm not trying to trivialize making a sale or anything like that um but like something like yesterday something very cool happened to me an opportunity was presented to me and for me it's more special or like i like i i reached out to mike mike and i where i am and i was just telling him about a one-on-one and i had it never even crossed my mind to to put it on on twitter or anything like i'd rather tell each person individually or like in a setting like this where it's more um intimate i guess uh putting it on twitter trivializes everything and something like a sale which could be especially if it's your first 10 sales well each one of those you remember you, to me it's just you kind of trivialize it by making everyone else a part of your circle um so and to jesse's point once that is out there it is gone that's it even if you delete it i still find that the tweet is out there somewhere like mike caught me accidentally i tweeted from the on one account about a, a personal blog post and i'm like whoa yep. I deleted it in two seconds, but I'm sure Mike got it. So, um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's uh, tweet, 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 meme. They grab things right away. Tweet coaster or twit coaster, whatever that is. I get Google alerts all the time about this one. This one website that that just uh, caches every single tweet, and, and it's just like first. There's no point to it. I don't see their their reasoning for doing it. But um, you know, even deleted ones are going to be cached. Well, yeah. if you get a celebrity that says something outlandish, like uh, Charlie Sheen, there right. you go. Right. <laughs> not a fan, Rob. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am more fascinated with the people that tend to be fascinated with them, but, but you know. <laughs> so I have a uh, another question that that was uh, inspired by what Brian was talking about. Um, Facebook. Uh, Many of us, I think all of us, have fan pages on Facebook. Am I correct? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And, and then there's, <laughs> uh, then there's photographers that, the that, of the group, that, that have their fan page, but then they also have a personal page where they're using sort of in the same way as their fan page. So Facebook, separate your business from your personal there's no reason for me to friend every person on my fan page. I only want friends from Facebook as my friends in real life. You know, like people that I talk to, that I'm, you know, that I communicate with on a daily basis. That's who I want to be friends with in my personal Facebook account. That's not who I want to, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to friend every single person that follows, that fans me on Facebook. That would be ridiculous, you know. Um, so what do you guys think about that, separating the Facebook from personal to the to business? Time. Definitely. I don't become, I don't friend anybody on my, anyone that's a fan of my page, I don't friend them just because. I would, I wait till they ask me and then I might decide if I actually want to or not. But usually it's people, I want to friend people I know. If I start having a conversation, am I breaking up again? Is that why Brian's smiling? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I want to, I want to have a, like at least a conversation with someone on Twitter, get to know them a little bit before I add anyone as a friend. I, I definitely, I, I, some guy added me as a friend the other day and I'm like, okay. And he was part of some photo group. The next thing I know, he suggested like 45 other photographers to me to become friends with. And I'm like, nope. And I deleted him and all the other freaking friend requests. So that was a big mistake. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? I work I, with Facebook the same way. Um, I keep it so that only only friends can see my personal information. But you know, that's my experiment. It's kind of like on on Flickr. That's my experiments with film and my uh, you know, kind of my bragging place of uh, you know, hey, look at this uh, look at this new camera I bought on eBay or look at this or that. And and the fan page is exactly what you'd expect. Um, you know, specials or deals I'm running, and uh, you know, a couple shots here and there from from local sessions. But I keep it I keep it different as well. Anyone else? I- I'm 
I've more and more questioning why I'm on Facebook. Um, I just I I love Twitter so much more now. I mean, I'd say the uh, average. I guess this is dependent on how many people you either follow or uh, or you are friends with on Facebook, respectively. But the the lifespan of any given message is very very short. So, you know. Uh, well, let me ask you guys a question then. To this point, uh, if it's okay, Scott, I don't mm-hmm. want to commandeer, but like, how many of you utilize in both Twitter and Facebook like lists, um, and I'm, like not like subscribing to someone else's list, but you know, do you have like I, I have a list of people like like you guys are on the list and some other people, and that's the one that's always my first column because it's so easy to filter out the junk. Um, so I don't know how many of you guys use that. Actually, the funny thing, I was talking I, with Jesse about this on Saturday. Um, uh, I used to use the Twitter lists uh, a lot and would separate the music from the photography, from the right. Prius stuff, from whatever. And um, I even had an HDR-specific one. That way, you know, it really did filter out anything that was not related. And unfortunately, it came to the point where Many times a day, I was getting requests. Hey, can you add me to your list? Are you serious? Yeah. And really? at that point, I just said, you know what? I'm deleting my list, and I got rid of any all photography related lists. You see, I'd like to get re re um, what's that word? Resurrect that. Where I would love to have a shared list where you know the there's a good core of us, and uh, <laughs> now I'm hungry for pizza. Um, <laughs> Um, the, the like you, you know ate? it's <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah actually <laughs> <laughs> hey why do you show everyone your beer glass by the way goblet we call it a goblet look at that nice. wine yeah. glass that's it's righteous. not a wine glass that's uh pretty things the beer is recanting it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> it needs to breathe hey Chris Lazari got this thing for me it's like a very limited edition thing so I'm I'm appreciative of it. <laughs> so are you, Heath. Oh, wow. <laughs> you guys um, been watching What Not to Wear together? What <laughs> <laughs> not to drink out of. Listen, I'll break your hip if you talk out again. Now, see, all I, uh, use are, all I use are lists. I have... I might follow people just to, like, network so they, you know, so I follow them back, but on... On TweetDeck, I use the list that I have on Twitter as my columns, and my all friends, I, I hardly ever, ever look at that. I've, I just got photographer list. I got an Arizona photographer list so I can keep up on the local guys because I tend to miss them with everybody else. Right. And, and then I've got like a friends and family, which are the, my close friends that live here that I don't want to miss their stuff. But, um, but that's how I use it. And I never get anyone asking to be on my Twitter list. Yeah. I'm jealous, Scott. Never heard of that. <laughs> uh, it was getting a little out of hand. That's why I had to, wow. <laughs> had to delete it. Scott's <laughs> one of the top ten on Facebook. Remember that, Scott? That was pretty That's cool. Right. Yeah, yeah. Don't... That actually made my my Facebook fan page jump from five hundred to three thousand. Did you tweet wow. about it? I did. <laughs> he did actually. I remember that. <laughs> well, didn't you lose half the followers? No, I still have. I think I'm at twenty eight hundred or something. And I'm so at, what's up with Phil and Joe not talking? They just look like <laughs> I'm enjoying the uh, the chat. Oh. No, it's uh, um, throwing my two cents about Twitter. I I'm blocked from. I work for a bank, so our network is pretty locked down. So that's one of my things that I feel like my Twitter world is severely neglected, and um, it's hard. You know, I can log into my iPhone every now and again, but if I'm sitting in my office, you know, looking at my phone, I look like a jackass. So. It's a delicate thing where I feel like I'm totally underutilizing it. And one of those people who just is putting content out there. Um, so I want it to be something more meaningful. So it's cool to hear about the way that everyone else is talking about how you guys are using lists and that sort of thing. Um, because, you know, it can be much better than it is. And I, you know, I catch everyone's photos every now and again. Um, but I think I need to start focusing more on quality um, over and above just getting stuff out there. What is all this chatter going it's definitely, on? It's definitely hard if you can't do it, you know, during the day, because it's really hard to yeah, keep up sucks. with. It, it's tough. Yeah. If, you, if, I, if I missed out on it eight or nine hours a day, I would just stop doing it, probably. 
Yeah, that's why yeah, I, I, I don't want to being able to tweet at work. Like, if <laughs> the amount of time I have to spend every evening trying to catch up with everybody who I want to catch up with, that's would be that's obscene. Yeah, that's what that's the drones for. Yeah. Well, that's why I want to do a. I think if we get a good concentrated list um, going, it might be a little bit easier. And it's uh, you know lists for the you know you can like if. Scott creates a list, or if I create a list, other people can subscribe to it. Um, and you can make it, I think, private, right, Scott? Uh, Twitter list? I don't think you yeah. can make those private. You can't. Scott, can I be on your list? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> this is just getting out of hand. I, I'm just playing with social channels. It's typical. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Do, do. We should have a, what we should do is have a website that links to all our RSS feeds and just populates all day. A website that links to all of our... It's yeah, but, like that's a just the, but that's just the images, though. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of like your Twitter list in a way, but it's one website we all go to. But I guess it's kind of like other things out there, but <laughs> it'd be nice to have a consolidated place. <laughs> that's, that's not a bad idea, dude. Joe, is that oh, really that, Chinese that, and Mexican together? <laughs> well, there's a place in Brooklyn that does that. I, right next to my sister's place in Sheepshead Bay. Ah, you city guys. All we get down here is barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Joe, Vinegar, that's vinegar-based barbecue. Yeah, no, you've never been here. You wouldn't call it good. <laughs> <laughs> that's Jersey, right, Joe? Yep. Yeah, I thought you've not been there, have you? <laughs> no, there's a place right next to my sister's. Like I was saying, that same Chinese and Mexican. Yeah, it's quite common. I've done. I know of several of them. I'm trying to snap a shot of every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we get in New York instead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that you, Jesse? Well, we'll have Secrets to. Out. We'll have to explore this whole um, this whole Twitter list thing and figure out what how we can do this without problems. Um, but. Okay, so I'm going to call this episode two, and I'm going <laughs> to stop recording.